Hello everybody, today we're going to be demoing a bathroom from this, into this. So let's go ahead and show you how we did it. Now as much fun as it is to pick up a smashing device in Smash, we can't do that just yet. There's a little bit of prep involved, so let's talk about that. The first thing we need to consider is a means of disposal. For this project, we did rent a 14 yard bin for all of our waste. However, you don't need to do this. You could absolutely haul it off yourself. You might consider getting some of these canvas bags, which are really nice for demolition projects. Especially if you have a smaller project, you don't need to spend all this money. But for ours, it is larger, so this is what we did. The next thing to consider is floor protection. In this house here, it is hardwood flooring, so we used ram board in blue painter's tape to adhere it all down. We also cover all banisters and railings, anything in a high traffic area, to help protect them. I will say that if you do have floors that were finished or refinished within the last year, you might want to avoid the blue tape as you could potentially pull the finish up. If you have carpeted floors, you can use drop cloths to cover those. The next thing to consider is negative air or dust management. What we're doing here is going to be just pulling out the air from the project space to the outside. What we'll be using is an air scrubber, and for anything mentioned in this video, be sure to check the description for product links. However, you don't need this. Really what this is, if you think about it, is just a giant vacuum hooked up here. This is the vacuum hose, if you want to call it that. It's just going to pull air to the outside. But if you have, say, a box fan on hand, you can absolutely just open your window, put the box fan in it there, and just blow all the air out that way. We do this professionally, so we have some tools that you might not. If you have a forced air system, you will want to block off any floor registers or vents in the area. In this space, you can see we just take a towel, clog up that duct there, and there was also a return air outside, so we went ahead and covered that as well. We do want to protect the HVAC systems in this house. We can also now shut off the main water supply to the house. You may have a quarter turn valve like this, in which you're just going to turn it simply a quarter of the way till it's perpendicular to the pipe, or something like this, in which you're going to rotate it clockwise until the water is off. Once you have your main shutoff off, you're going to want to drain the lines as well. So take a sink, hopefully below your project space, although no worries if you don't have one, and just open both the hot and cold valves until the sink has stopped letting water come out of it. This way you'll know that your lines are successfully drained. With that, we can start removing some items. So this here is the toilet, and you'll notice that there is a shutoff valve for this. You may or may not have a shutoff valve with your toilet. No worries either way, because I'm going to strongly recommend removing it regardless. These things are a ticking time bomb, and if you're going to this trouble of renovating, you should be replacing this. So with the main water off, I'm going to flush the toilet now, and then open up the tank here, and I want to get all of this water out of the toilet. We also want to disconnect the hose line, and again, this I will be replacing, so I'm not trying to salvage it. I'm just using some channel locks here to unscrew it from the shutoff valve. Just note, there will still be some water in this line, so you might want to grab a towel so that you can absorb any spillage. Prior to shutting off the water, we did fill up a couple gallons in this bucket here. We're just going to dump that into the bowl to flush out the majority of the remaining water. There will be some still left over. To get rid of that, I'd recommend just using a shop back, preferably take the filter out, suck it all up. Or you could get a product like Liquid Lock and solidify the water that way. Here we're using a towel because it's just what we had available to us. Uh, but again, one of those other two methods would most likely be preferable. With those steps taken care of, we can now unbolt the toilet from the floor. You'll most likely have a couple of bolts on either side, so you just want to take those off. A pair of channel locks again to do so. Maybe rusty and hard to get off, um, but again, with enough elbow grease, you can do it. If you don't have access to these, you might have a skirted toilet, so you might want to search up how to remove a skirted toilet. If you've done a good job of getting all the water out of your toilet, you don't necessarily have to use a garbage bag, although it is a good option just to keep things a little bit cleaner as you remove this from the house. So I'm just going to take this bag here and slowly rock the toilet and try to get it seated into this bag. That way, as I remove it, any water that is left over isn't dripping as I take it out of the house. Finally, your wax ring may be left on the floor here of this drain, or it may have come up with the toilet. So anyways, just double check, get that out of there, and then you can just take something and clog up that drain to stop any sewer gas from coming up. For this demo process, you will see us using a 3-foot pry bar a lot. Great tool for demo, has a lot of leverage and a lot of power behind it, as well as a hammer. 
and of course you want some good protection on. Now. For this, what we did is we start off by just removing all of that tile, smashing it out and using the leverage from the pry bar to get it off of the backer. Typically with tubs like this, you'll have a plywood box built around it. And in our case, it was fastened with nails. So we can just take the pry bar and rock it back and forth, pry it and get those fasteners out. If yours was screwed in, you will likely want to actually unscrew the screws as prying it out is going to be a whole lot harder. Do not be afraid to utilize the sozzle here. In the demo process, the sozzle is your best friend. Before we can remove the tub, we do need to disconnect the plumbing. This is the drain, and there is a dedicated drain removal tool for this. However, I'm showing you that you do not need it. I have a couple of screwdrivers here, and I'm just sliding them in. They make an X, as you can just kind of take a look at, and I'm just kind of applying a rotation to it and it's going to unscrew. If you're not trying to salvage anything and you're finding that this is not working, again, do not be afraid of utilizing the hammer or sawzill. If you're not salvaging it, you can get messy. Don't be afraid to have a little bit of fun here. If your tub has an overflow, it's typically just one or two screws, usually a Phillips that you can just unscrew. And as I had just mentioned, Sometimes you just got to smash. Before we can lift the tub out of position, we do also need to cut these water lines or disconnect them from the tub. For this, we are going to be cutting and capping them. And here is how we go about doing that. We're going to start with a pipe cutting tool. Uh, for this one, it's just a small little guy helps for getting into tight spaces. And this is an older style than what we use now, but we're really just going to tighten it on, rotate it, tighten the little knob, rotate it, tighten the little knob and continue until the pipe is cut. We do also want to clean this pipe up as it is disgusting and we need our new fitting to sit properly, but also it's just satisfying. So for this, you can use an emery cloth or some sandpaper, just make sure you get around and clean it all up. We then want to deburr the pipe and this tool here is both an inside and outside portion. Just flip it around and that's just going to go ahead and kind of sharpen off both the inside and outside and taper the edge of that pipe so it's not sharp and so that we don't create any turbulence. And this is what's gonna allow the shark bite cap that we're gonna be putting on this temporarily to fit on there and not fail. Speaking of the shark bite end cap we're gonna be putting on, this is a depth gauge. So what you can do with this tool is you just slide it over your pipe and then take a Sharpie and mark where the end of that tool sits. That way when you push on your shark bite, you know that you're fully seated when it gets to that marker line there. And that's how easy it is to install the shark bite. It really does just push right on. You just want to make sure you get it fully seated. Lastly, for this tub, we do have to remove the tile surround as it's built over it. So start by just cutting all the caulking or silicone in the corners. Any change of plane here with the tile, just a sharp knife to cut all that out. And then we take a multi-tool and score the drywall around all of the tile. That way we can remove the tile and backer for it in nice, big, clean chunks with minimal damage to the surrounding drywall that may or may not be salvaged depending on the scope of your project. Now with all that work done, we can lift the tub out of place. And in our case, we were literally able to just kind of lift it up. Yours may be seated a little bit nicer, so you may have to actually pry it up or remove a couple of extra nails. There may be some if you have a flange that are holding it into the surrounding walls. Um, and you do have to use some amount of brain power here. Don't be dummies like us. Uh, you know, you have to find your angles and, and be smart with getting this out as it's usually a tight fit. After the tub is out, you'll be left with a skeleton and you need to dismantle and remove it. Think smart with this. Uh, while you could smash and pry away, a lot of the times it's so much easier just make a couple little incisions there with the very precise sawzall <laughs> and once you have some cuts you'll find that you have a lot of leverage most of the time and things come out a whole lot easier. For our project here we are going to be removing this wall which means all of the plumbing house in the wall will have to be reworked. We have a couple of water lines which as already demonstrated can just be cut and capped However, on the right there, that is a vent. What it does is supply air to the drains so that they can drain properly. So that's going to have to be reworked. But in the meantime, we're just going to cut it out. That way we can proceed with the rest of the demo. 
And while you can't see much here, I just want to show that we are replacing every single shutoff. So in the meantime, just to get water back on at the end of the demo day, we just cap everything that we can. A lot of times I think you'll be surprised at how easily things can come apart, like this shower door. Literally just rocked right out of place. Uh, yours might be installed a little better, you might have to actually unscrew it, but for the most part, things come apart pretty easy. As we do have access from behind for this tiled wall, we can just smash from behind, a little safer and easier that way. Just using the pry bar once again, it is very strong, so it makes quick work of removing all of these tiles and the backer that comes with them. Anytime you're removing tiles, just please be careful. I have had to get stitched up before when demoing out some tile, as it is very heavy and very sharp, and if you're not careful, it can hurt you, so please just be cautious. If you're taking out what I like to call a coffin style shower stall like this one, you'll have a nice big corner to remove. Uh, for this, again, coming back to that sawzill, nice wood blade on it, just cut it in half and then you can use leverage to get all these pieces out and you'll find that's a very common theme for taking things apart. Now I do also want to just address how to go about removing walls or more specifically, can you remove specific walls? We have something that are called load bearing walls in which, go figure, they carry a load. You cannot remove these walls. <laughs> it would be detrimental to the structure of your home. So how do you know whether or not a wall is safe to remove? Unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly, but a good tip is if you have joists above your wall and they're running parallel with your wall, the joists aren't sitting above it, there is no load above that wall. So it's typically gonna be safe to come out. Also, when it comes to shower stalls like this one, I have yet to see one that has any sort of load built into it. With that being said, I'm not telling you that yours is safe to come out. If you ever have any doubts, please call a structural engineer and make sure that it's good to go. This is the last thing that you want to mess up. It would be a very costly mistake. While we did discuss it earlier, the vent here is going to be reworked. So for the meantime, I'm just going to cut it up high and eventually we're going to figure out a new way to vent our plumbing and tie in to the vent up there as we do have attic access from above. If you're not a plumber, you have no knowledge of plumbing, don't be afraid to get your plumber involved at some point. Give them a call and figure out a better route for this plumbing so that you can get away and have less walls in your bathroom, have more of an open concept. If you have a tiled ceiling like this one, you have to be really careful as you remove it. This will have a lot of weight to it most of the time, and it's fighting gravity. So once you start prying, it will want to fall, and if you're below it, it will hurt. <laughs> so just be smart and take your time as you get the ceiling portion out of this. For removing tiled walls, you can do what I am doing here. I like to just take a hammer and smash a nice horizontal line all the way through the tile and the backer. And then once I have that, you want your gloves on and you can just rock both the tile and the backer board out of the fasteners, right? Just rock it a lot back and forth and it will eventually shake loose from those fasteners and you can get it out in nice big chunks, which makes it a whole lot cleaner and easier. Not all construction is equal. You may have a harder time at this if it was built better, but with the right amount of shaking and elbow grease, it will come out. Now at this point, we'd actually already turned water back on as we capped everything. However, our shark bites were too thick to fit through the holes in the bottom plate of wood here. So just with a little bit of a multi-tool and some hammer action, we could kind of separate that bottom plate, get the wooden pieces, and not have to turn water back off and redo the shark bites. However, if you've done the same thing, don't be afraid to just shut off water and take the shark bites off and then do it again. Then we got this nice thick mortar bed here. So to get this up, just once again, prying underneath of it. And you don't really need two people here. I mean, we're making use of, of the fact that we both are here. So Sebastian can lift it and I can smash it. But honestly, one person, you can either smash or just lift and drop, lift and drop, lift and drop. And it will start to break apart into pieces. It's going to be very heavy. Just know that. And then you may have a PVC liner if it was done correctly. So I can just kind of cut around the drain and then take the whole liner and dispose of it. Nothing on this project is being salvaged, hence why I'm smashing this vanity apart. I have a lot of fun while I work, and I'm not going to apologize for that. If you want to salvage anything on your projects, by all means, go ahead. 
it will take a lot more time. So just be aware of that. But a lot of the time, if you're careful, you might be able to reuse some things. So that is entirely up to you. If you're removing a giant mirror like this one, I would strongly encourage you to tape it up. In the event that it breaks, this is just going to mitigate the chance of any injury. To remove your vanity, you will need to disconnect the plumbing. If you have one like this, you can simply unscrew the trap from the drain assembly, and it makes it very easy. You will also need to disconnect the water lines, very similar to the toilet line. You can just unscrew it, you may be able to do it by hand, or you may need a pair of channel locks. In the event that you cannot unscrew it, yours is all glued together, you can simply cut it out of position like this one, and once you do so, you do need to make sure you're doing something to stop any sewer gas from coming out. So with this drain, it was very disgusting, kind of gave it a little bit of a clean out, and then just put this orange test cap over top for the time being. Back to the mirror, with these style, they almost always have these clips on both the top left and top right, so you can just kind of push them up with a screwdriver so they're no longer supporting the mirror. And then there's oftentimes an adhesive as well. You just want to kind of start to pry the mirror back, break that adhesive's bond, and then get it out, hopefully in one piece. As we remove this wall, very similar process to the other wall, uh, I just want to make a note. Please wear your PPE throughout any of the more dangerous parts of this type of work. You'll notice a lot of the time we have a respirator, eye protection, steel toe boots, gloves, ear protection. Uh, this is dangerous work and you just want to take the proper steps. I also want to make a note, you'll notice in this project we have a lot of electrical and I can't go too much into detail as there are so many variables and yours will likely differ from our situation here. But if you don't really understand the electrical and you don't really know how to go about reworking it, you can just leave the box hanging like what you see before you and have an electrician come out once everything's taken apart and they can rework all the wiring and take care of those boxes and connections for you. To remove any trim, you're going to want to take a knife and just score gently along the top, cutting through the caulking where the trim meets the wall. And then you can take a small pry bar or even a drywall knife and just get it between the two materials and start to gently pry it, rocking it back and forth and getting it off of the wall. If it wasn't already obvious, this is a very involved project. Walls are coming out left, right, and center. All of the mechanical items are being redone. And yours, hopefully, isn't just as complicated. You might have a simple 5x8 bathroom that's just to remove and replace. So not everything here is going to be relevant, but we're showcasing a lot of different things. That way, if you do come across them, you'll know how to deal with them. The final step in any bathroom demo is going to be the floor removal. For this, we will be using the same pry bar as well as an SDS with a tile scraping bit. Now you most likely will not need the SDS, but we have one and it helps in certain situations. But for the most part and with most floors, the pry bar will work just fine. What we have here is a lath installation, which is kind of like a chicken wire that gets stapled onto the floor. Thin set gets screeded over that and tiles laid down. Uh, there are numerous floors that you might run into. You may find old hardwood below, some linoleum. It's always a surprise and it's never fun. So just know when you're getting to this part, it's perfectly normal to regret all of your decisions. Just persevere, push through it, and once it's done, it will be satisfying, okay? I promise, you just, you just gotta go and get it done. This is also a great example of the importance of negative air. There are several points throughout this type of project in which dust is just being generated like it's nothing. So having a vacuum kind of system going, pumping that air out, it's really important stuff. We're also big believers in housekeeping. So as we're doing this, we're vacuuming multiple times a day, trying to keep the dust down and the chaos a little bit controlled. With the lath style flooring, it does get stapled down. So we're just taking a couple pairs of side cutters, just going about and removing all of those staples. That way, when it comes time to thinking about tiling, we'll have a nice clean subfloor to work with. But anyways, that's it for the demo. Congrats, you made it. 
Uh, we now have a nice blank canvas. We can start visualizing things, maybe creating a floor plan if you haven't already. Hopefully you didn't run into any nasty surprises, although they certainly come up. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, if I could ask you to maybe hit that like button on your way out, subscribe if you've seen these videos and enjoy them and learn something. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.